Hello, this is Anna with Anna D's Scratch and Crafts. In the last video, I showed you these little items that we're going to fill up like stained glass windows. And I will show you the air that I made in doing so, how I corrected that air, and then finally the steps to finish them up. Since I used green, just use the same color, I will start with green on my little animals. I switched to my little toothpick to put them in. And on this one, the green's going to go in just the tips. Now, this isn't really a dark color because I intend to have these hanging in the window. Therefore, I want them to be kind of translucent so the colors will sparkle in the sun. And the reason I'm using the toothpick is all I need is a tiny little drop in each of these sections. Just like you saw me do with the hummingbirds and butterflies. And we're going to speed it up through here so you don't have to watch me slowly fill everything up. This is a picture of just one of the items. Same thing happened to all three, but I'm only showing you one. You can see how the green spread underneath and totally covered several spots. I was able to clean this up, actually remove all of it, and then I'll now show you exactly what I did to correct this so it did not happen a second time. Molds are finished, or they're out. These are the dragons. These are the ones that only took one curing to finish. Then these are the larger ones that needed two curings. This one moved on me, so I'm going to do a couple more of these, but and I'll show you the end results, but you don't need to see me doing them. Instead of a tree, I did a snowflake. And then the little ones. I have a tree, a snowflake, and the ribbon. There's some still in the mold. Fairly easy to get out. I can do it with one hand. Simply pull it out, push, pull out, <laughs> getting underneath it. And this snowflake too also moved on me. So I'm going to have to watch them a little bit more in the future to make sure I get them set and steady before they do set. And again on the big mold, yep, easy to pull it out. This one stayed centered more for me. Very pretty. Now the <clears throat> candle holders, I can kind of hold it up now that it's set. I've got two colors. I did one in green, which you saw me do, and then I did another one in a very light blue. So I've got one more layer to go, and I will be putting that in today. And now back to the problem children. And I'll get with you as soon as I set the camera up. Now here are the items. On the ones that I had to clean up, just to make sure that what I was planning on doing worked, I did finish them. So these are the finished items. And they did turn out looking gorgeous. And I've got some crystals on order so I can hang these from my window. When I finally get those crystals in and get it all attached, I'll show you what they look like. But now I'll show you how I actually did these without them ending up like what you saw. Simple tape. This is just regular clear plas plastic <laughs> packing tape, and it's just the right size. 
lay the items on being careful because on one of them I did have it a little wrinkled. So now I've got a backing that is going to stop it from sneaking underneath and into the next section. I am doing this. There is a get it up, a flat side and a rounded top side. I'm making sure it's the flat side that goes down. This one goes on this way so it fits on the tape. And like that, make sure it's a good tight seal. I'll cut this off so. And then the last one, which one's that's the flat side. And make sure it is straight. Lay it down nice and tight. Don't need any more of this rest of this tape, so we'll go ahead and cut it off. As my hands are in the way, so you can't see anything. Now, with this done, they will not sneak underneath the colors. And to make it easier so I can move them around without moving all of them, I'm going to go ahead and cut these apart. We are ready to color. And we will do each color like I showed you how I did the green the previous video. But that's the one that snuck underneath and got into a problem. And I was lucky enough to be able to clean it out. A little work. So that I could end up with the pretty ones. So now to make some resin to finish the final pour on this one. And to start the first color on this one. And to begin doing a couple more of the Christmas scratchers to get them centered. So I'll be back when I've got the resin ready and we're ready to start playing. As you can see, I've got these pours. You saw me do the final. I've got them centered, but I will keep an eye on them to make sure that they stay centered. And... I have the color for the rest of the candles. This is probably not going to be enough. I'll have to make up another batch. But I'd rather make up another batch than to have way too much. It looks like it's enough for that one, but I will not have enough for both. So let me put this one out of the way so it can set up. Move the smaller one in. I'll finish the rest of this in there. And then I will go make up another batch and finish filling. So I'll be back shortly. Back with another batch of resin. To finish this one off. Now what I did not show you on the other one but I did do was let's get some of the bubbles out. And it does seem, can I pour a little bit more in? Not enough. This flower is going to stick out a little. That'll hopefully add charm to it. But I can put just a teeny bit more in, although it's not going to cover the flower. I'm still going to use this little mold because even with the tape on, it would be easier for me to move the mold around than to try to move each individual of these on the tape. And I'll probably stick to the tape. So since I was using orange to finish off the candle, I'm going to start with orange. So this way I'm going to do different spots than I did the last time. 
but again just a little bit of color drop at a time let it fill and I won't do anything on this one because it'll bleed into it oops sorry is this on camera Let me move it down a bit that's why I'm hitting the camera because it's up so high and I think I will do the face in this color that's the nice thing about doing something like this you can make up your own color scheme you can throw glitter into it you can throw dried flowers into it you can put just about anything that will fit into that little form into it okay orange on the dragon am I getting it in? I move the camera make sure I'm doing it we got flame so I want the ah always keep now I have learned from experience that there's still a little resin sitting right up against there I can clean that off once it is set so I don't have to get too scared at the moment a little bit of tweezers or a little exacto knife will help scrape that up but I want the flame to be orange out of his mouth And the flame on the other side. I'm probably making you dizzy if I keep hitting that camera. Sorry about that. And that is all I need on the dragon. And over here on the seven tailed fox. I'm only going to do one of the tails. Each tail will be a different color, I think. And I always kind of think that tail is what comes down to this little piece down here. I'm going to put the orange in here as well. And as you saw, a lot of it left over. I still have, need some more wool sockets. We're going to have a wall socket. And it's got a little bit of orange in it. And it'll have other colors. I'm going to have some of the most psychedelic and beautiful wall sockets in a house. But then that's me. Now I can't put colors side by side, but I can do some other colors. So I've got purple here, which I can throw in that tail, which is far enough away from the others, even that little one there, that it won't bleed over. And I think I'll make this dragon a purple body. The last one was green. We'll make you purple. Now one of the reasons I'm taking my Q-tip and moving that little couple of drops around 
is once I get the area wet, when I go to put the next drops in, it will naturally flow to even itself out. I think one more drop should do it. And on my little peacock, which I think I have to move because you can't see them. There we go. I'm going to do these two. Again, they're nowhere near the ones I've already filled, so they will not try to bleed into each other. And this way I can actually get more than one color done at a time. Speed up the process. Oops. Clean my toothpick off. Do I have enough over here? Yeah, I do. So that is all that is done for my little pendants. And again, the purple I will put in with the orange. And I am through for the day. Once this stuff is cured, We'll be back for the next. I'll show you what the candlesticks look like. I'll have to do a second pour on those. And it looks as if they moved on me again, so I'll straighten them up before it gets set. Actually, the whole thing moved on me. I think I hit it. But yeah, the snowman wants to sit at the bottom. I don't want him to sit at the bottom. So I hope you enjoyed this section of the projects and I'll see you in the next step when we do a little bit more. Thank you for joining me today. Here are the candlesticks out of the mold. If I could go back, could I do something different? Yeah. The tint was a little bit darker than I thought it was but you can still see the flowers through it. Kind of close up on it. You can see the flowers, the shells. That's where the candle goes in. There are pockets of air bubbles because of the way the item sat in there and I didn't get the resin caught in. Or like here, there was a piece that was up against the wall and definitely stopped any resin getting underneath it. These are things now that I'm aware of, I can fix the next time. But for a first time using the mold, I think they came out pretty. We are back to do our next color. I started with an orange and then realized I did an orange, so I threw a blue in. And you know that yellow and blue make a green. So orange and blue makes a very dark green.
finished the larger trees and with some of the extra leftover I had some new molds with the little animals I filled them in cute on to our next color this time I've got a blue Now time for the next color. color. And done. Final colors are done, and it's time to take them off the tape. I wish I'm on camera to do this for you. And as you see, the color stayed. Tape comes right off. That one's finished. Oops. Done. finished. Crystals are in. Time to show you how I'm hanging it. Uh, basically it comes in a fairly long strip. I'm only using one third because that's the length I want for hanging. Each of them, you can take it apart so you can make them any length that you want. Or if you want you can make it a pendant. I'm using them as uh, sun catchers. Only going to do one. So we need to attach the crystal to the dragon. And if you who do jewelry making, you know what I'm doing here. Opening up the round. Get on camera through the crystal, through the dragon, and close it back up. That side's done. The other side, I have a hook. What's nice about it, it's got the little clip on the end. So all I have to do is clip it on and we're done. And here they are hanging in the window. Sun's not out today so you're not seeing them at their best. Thank you for joining me on this project and I wait to see you when I start my next one. Have a good day. Take care. Bye. And if you enjoyed my video, please press the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't, and the notification bell so you know when my next video is out. Thank you.